What's up everybody? So in this video, we're going to be talking some more about membrane transport, specifically about simple diffusion. Now remember, just like this little cute monkey here, we are all made up of billions of cells, right? So if we look here, we're made up of billions of these things here, billions of these. Now, one of the key parts of a cell is this thing surrounding it. What do we call this thing surrounding it, this wall? What do we call it? We call it a membrane. And it looks like this, right? It looks like this. Now, a membrane has many parts to it and all that. And I made a video on that. So we can, you can check that, out if you check that out if you're not sure what a membrane is. Now, what is the main function of a membrane? The main function of a membrane is to control what goes in and what goes out. It's like the wall, right? That's what it does. Now, just like in real life, you can transport by a Lamborghini, by walking, by a boat, a ship, plane helicopter, parachute, whatever. There's many ways to transport yourself, to move yourself. Now, the same way, there are, there's many ways to transport things from outside to, in, to inside the cell or from inside to outside. And they are right here. There is simple diffusion, there's facilitated diffusion, there's osmosis, endocytosis, exocytosis, active transport. So all of these five, eventually you're going to need to know. Now, I already made a video on simple diffusion and then another one on osmosis. In this video, we're only going to be focusing on facilitated diffusion. Now, if you understand simple diffusion, facilitated diffusion will be a breeze. So, I'm going to have a quick recap, like maybe like one minute or so on simple diffusion. So, that way you'll understand facilitated diffusion really, really well. So, we're going to zoom in to right here, around here. Um, to explain real quick simple diffusion. So here we have a membrane, right? Notice that this membrane is just a normal phospholipid bilayer. There's no proteins, right? None of these things, none of these proteins. We're only going to, for simple diffusion, we don't need those proteins. So remember, simple diffusion was this. It's the transport of a molecule down its concentration gradient. So from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So you can see on the outside of the cell, so here, so this is the outside of the cell, this is the membrane, and this is the inside of the cell. Um, you can see on the outside, there's a lot, a high concentration of this molecule. And on the inside, there's a low concentration. So naturally, by simple diffusion, this molecule will travel down through the membrane to even out this concentration gradient. So that's, that's all the simple diffusion is. So let me show you. So we, for simple diffusion, you need a concentration gradient. That's all. You don't even need ATP. This process happens completely by itself. Now, which kinds of molecules travel this way? Which kinds of molecules? Small and hydrophobic molecules. It's very important that these molecules are small because then they can wiggle and waggle through this phospholipid bilayer. Secondly, it's very important that they're hydrophobic. This means scared of water. We know that the outside of the cell and the inside of the cell has a lot of water. And then this part here, um, these fatty acid tails, ha are very afraid of water. So there's no water here. It's very empty. So in order for a molecule to travel through the membrane, it must not be afraid of water because this area is, needs to be able to survive in here. So as soon as it goes in here, it must be okay with it so, it, so that it can continue and travel through the whole membrane. If this molecule is hydrophilic, meaning it likes water a lot, then as soon as it enters here, it's going to be like, oh, no, I don't like this. There's no water here, and it's going to go back. So it's going to be impossible for it to trans transport across the membrane. So that's it. That's all you need to know for simple diffusion to understand facilitated diffusion. Now, that was probably more than a minute for simple diffusion, but whatever. It's important that you get it. So what's the difference now um, with regards to facilitated diffusion? So my question is, how do we transport big and hydrophilic molecules? The exact opposite of this. How do we transport the big ones and the hydrophilic ones? Because we know now how to transport the small and hydrophobic ones. But what about the opposite ones? That, my friend, is facilitated diffusion. So notice, here we're looking at a membrane inside of the cell, outside of the cell. What's the difference now? Now we have these proteins that we've been seeing the whole time. These proteins. So they were not required for simple, uh, simple diffusion but they are needed for this facilitated diffusion. Why? Because these proteins are very good at transporting big and hydrophilic molecules, and you'll see, and you'll see exactly why just now. By the way, 
we call these proteins specific names. So the uh, proteins that look like this one, so you can see these proteins are not continuous like a pipe, like this one. So this one is like continuous like a pipe. We call these that are continuous like a pipe a channel protein because it forms a sort of a channel. And then we call these that look kind of like this one carrier proteins. And you'll see what their difference is later. So normally the problem is big molecules and hydrophilic molecules um, struggle to pass through the membrane because um, the membrane, if, if there's no proteins, because the membrane is so tightly packed that a big molecule can't wiggle and waggle through this membrane. And secondly, hydrophilic molecules, as soon as they go into here, even if they can pass through it, they bounce back out because this area is, is hydrophobic. So facilitated diffusion, facilitated means to make easier or quicker. So facilitated diffusion is a way to make easier or quicker for big and hydrophilic molecules to pass through the membrane because otherwise they will never pass through the membrane. Okay, so here I have a blank page. Like I cleared out these names here because now, I'm going, now we're going to add some detail. So, so I've been talking about this big molecules and hydrophilic molecules. W give me some examples, man. What are some examples? So here we have a nice mess, but it's going to make sense just now. So... The problem with you is that you're learning, you've just started learning biology, you're in topic one now. So a lot of what I'm going to say now, I'm going to tell you, probably won't make that much sense to you, but I can guarantee you that I'll give you enough information that it makes sense for this explanation. And then later on, as you keep learning biology, you're going to understand this stuff a lot better, okay? So don't blame yourself if you don't 100% understand everything perfectly. At this stage, it's not required to understand everything 100% perfectly. So, okay, just so this you keep that in your mind. So two important molecules that we need to care about is glucose and amino acids. Okay, remember how I said facilitated diffusion transports these big molecules, right? Because they look like this. They're huge. Look at this glucose. This is its structure. If you compare that to uh, oxygen and carbon dioxide that transport by simple diffusion, remember simple diffusion transports these tiny molecules. See, they're only made up of two oxygens, this oxygen molecule, and carbon dioxide is only made up of a carbon and two oxygens. They're so tiny, so they can very easily transport by uh, simple diffusion. But glucose, glucose is basically a molecule that you need to make energy, otherwise you can't survive. Glucose looks like this. It's way bigger if you compare it to these, right? They will never fit through the membrane by themselves. They need a protein. Same with amino acids. So amino acids are like little circles like this, that when you link them together, they make proteins. Proteins help build muscle and have many other functions in your body. So they are also quite big. Look at the structure. They're quite big compared to oxygen and carbon dioxide. So here, this is a simplified diagram. So how do they move? They move very similar to simple, uh, simple diffusion, except there's a protein. Let me show you. So if we, let's, let's take uh, this one. So if we say there's a lot of uh, glucose inside your cell. Let's say there's a high concentration of glucose inside your cell. And there's a low concentration right outside. So there's a lot inside, a little bit outside. These glucoses will move down the concentration gradient. So right now, we have a concentration gradient. One side has a high concentration, the outside has a low concentration. So it's going to move down the concentration gradient. But it can't just move through the membrane like simple diffusion. It needs this protein. So it's going to go to this protein, this carrier protein, right? It's called a carrier protein. And this carrier protein is going to grab this glucose. And then basically, it's going to open up this gate so glucose can pass through. Just like this. See? The gate opened up and now it traveled through and now it's on the other side. So it traveled down its concentration gradient with the help of this carrier protein. Now, an important thing to know is that carrier proteins are specific to a particular molecule. So, let's say this carrier protein is specific to glucose, whereas another one may be specific to amino acids, meaning they can only carry their specific molecule, none other. So that's, that's it that we need to know for this carrier one. It's a type of facilitated diffusion. But what about this one here? This is a, what, a channel protein. How does it work? So, some other molecules that we need to know for this, for this specific protein, this channel protein, is ions. Ions, they have plus and minus charges, so chlorine and potassium. Potassium is something that can be found in your, uh, 
in bananas, for example, some other fruits. Chlorine can be found in salt. Okay, you don't need to worry about this. I'm just trying to relate it a bit more to real life. So, and again, like I said, if you don't know about, much about these two molecules, don't worry. It's not the purpose of this chapter. They just want you to know some examples, but you're going to learn about this later. So, don't stress out too much if you don't know what this is about. You just need to understand the concept of facilitated, facilitated diffusion, what it means. So, anyways, some other molecules like chlorine and potassium will also travel by facilitated diffusion. And you might be confused now because, look, these molecules are quite small. Potassium is only made up of one potassium molecule. Chlorine is only made up of one chlorine molecule. So why can they not travel through the membrane? Why can they not just travel like this, like simple diffusion? The reason why is because of, not because of their size, but because of their hydrophilic nature. These two molecules, whenever a molecule is charged, like plus or minus, they are hydrophilic, meaning they love water. They cannot stand an area without water. So the reason why they don't just travel through here is not because of their size. It's because of that hydrophilic nature. As soon as they, even though they're small enough, as soon as they get into this hydrophobic layer, they get afraid. They don't like this area. They want water. So they just go back right out. So they can never get through the entire layer. That's why they need this kind of molecule. Uh, this kind of protein. So let's say we have chlorine here and there's a whole lot of it in, uh, outside of your cell and a very little bit inside. Just like simple diffusion, they will move down the concentration gradient except facilitated diffusion needs a protein. So that's what we call facilitated, facilitated diffusion. So they will move through this channel protein straight down. Um, the only difference is a channel protein doesn't take one molecule at a time or a few molecules at a time. It can take many. It can just stream. It can pour right through as fast as it wants. So transport by um, this kind of molecule, a channel protein, is much faster than a carrier protein. That's a one key difference. Um, oftentimes, this uh, channel protein may be gated. Let me show you what that means. Oh yeah, by the way, this channel protein, just like the, uh, this carrier protein, is also specific to a particular molecule. So we can say that this specific protein is specific to cal uh, chlorine, not potassium, right? Another one may be specific to potassium, not chlorine, okay? So that's also important. Now, this concept of gated means uh, there's certain, uh, these proteins can be gated, meaning they can be closed like this. So even though there's a big, uh, let me put it this way, there's a big concentration difference between the outside and the inside, these cannot just travel through because the gate is closed. So this gate will open when, it, when the time is right. So that's an important concept to note, that these proteins can sometimes be gated, meaning closed, temporarily. Now again, just like simple diffusion, this process does not need ATP. No energy is required. This diffusion happens by itself, naturally. But we do need these proteins. These proteins are required, okay? unlike simple diffusion. So that's really it for the difference between simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion. If you get simple, you get facilitated. The only difference is the fact that facilitated diffusion requires this protein that simple diffusion does not. And the reason why is because um, these big molecules, these big and hydrophilic molecules, cannot transfer through this membrane just like that. They need this protein since they are so big, they cannot wiggle through these phospholipid bilayer. And plus... This area here is hydrophobic, meaning it hates water. So if this molecule loves water, it cannot just transfer through here. It needs to transfer through here because there's continuous water in this protein that's connected from the outside and the inside. 